Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing another movie review this week in honor of the passing of a tremendously good actor, best known for doing a lot of stage work, and went on to do a lot of big roles such as playing Hans Gruber in Die Hard, as well as going into films like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, he went on to play Alexander Dune in Galaxy Quest, and he also does the voice of Marvin the paranoid android in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy who was of course played by Warwick Davis under the costume as well as playing Severus Snap in the Harry Potter films he even directed the film A Little Chaos had appeared in uh, Sweeney Todd which was directed by Tim Burton and several other films that he had in his career the name was Alan Rickman, who just passed away at the age of 69 due to cancer, which hard to believe on the same week because a few days before his passing was rock star legend David Bowie also passed away at, at 69 due to cancer. So, yeah, hard to believe. This was such a depressing week that two of my favorite legends is no longer with us. So, I thought that I might be able to review one film that I really enjoy because this was written and directed by Kevin Smith, the writer best known for doing uh, Clerks, Mall Rats, and Chasing Amy, called Dogma. Yep, a story about two falling angels who find a loophole that will get into back who found a loophole that will get it. <clears throat> it's about two angels who got banished and found a loophole that will get them back into heaven even though they had to destroy the existence in the process and now this is definitely something different from Kim Smith because this is a movie that actually brought in some lots of big controversy mostly from um, the religious cult between uh, Christianity and Catholicism and considering that Kim Smith is a Catholic he wanted to do a film that's actually a parody of it you know just adding all this other um, religious stuff in the mix just to make it look more interesting and I, I thought it worked pretty well I mean it is a fantasy comedy and I first saw this movie when I rented this at Blockbuster back in 2000 because I was curious enough to check this out. It had an all-star cast which includes uh, Chris Rock, Selma Hayek, um, George Carlin, Bart Court, and even uh, Janine Galofio. And of course they also have Jason Lee with uh, Jay and Silent Bob, you know, always been played by Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith since they've been introduced since Clerks. Yeah, so this this had to be a one terrific comedy. And of course they have Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. You know, they had starred in films together even after the film uh, Good Will Hunting which uh, they actually wrote uh, the screenplay as well. And they did a great job. They actually won a Cameo Award for that. That was interesting. So I thought, why not? I mean, this had to be a fun movie. And Alan Rickman was very good in the film as, uh, as Metatron, the voice of God. You know, especially with all that wings that he had that uh, showed up. <laughs> Just like the wings that uh, the two angels had. Now, uh, this is a pretty rare Blu-ray that I picked up um, back in 2010. They had it on sale for $9.99 at Ralph's. It was a supermarket in Southern California. And hard to believe because um, I had this Blu-ray unopened for years now. I haven't seen this movie for a very long time until now. And this actually has all the extras on the back 
that was taken directly from the special edition DVD, which, surprisingly enough, they're missing a few. That also includes the trailer and some of the featurettes that they had. And I wish they they had included this on this Blu-ray set because I think this movie would have been a whole lot better considering how good the picture quality really is which looked like the transfer was taken from a UK master print because I noticed the movement sounds because I know the movement seems a bit uh, quite different with all that saturation and colors in the mix actually it looks a lot better than the previous DVDs that they had so it actually blew that away and and of course they took off the the Lionsgate uh, films logo since they were the distributor for the film even though they had the print logo on the side yeah yeah mostly because uh, originally the film was going to be released by Miramax films by uh, producers Bob and Harvey Weinstein but due to the controversy that um, Kevin Smith had with the film yeah because it focuses on uh, Catholicism and Christianity yeah in fact even before this movie got released he was receiving a lot of death threats because he actually screened this movie at the Cannes Film Festival back in 1999 it was like a three hour cut of the film which was the original version of the movie which was included on the deleted scenes so you just had to cut it down to uh, two hours and eight minutes um, that way it would be the final cut of the film to be released in theaters you know before you know th this actually happened yeah because it actually makes fun of um, lots of um, religious stuff in the movie yeah but he wasn't trying to take itself so seriously considering that Smith is a Catholic himself so he probably wanted to do some kind of a fantasy comedy about religion and that's definitely what he wanted to do which I didn't mind I mean I'm Catholic too so I can understand what he was going through and also this blu-ray that I picked up since I did got it for a lot less back in 2010 Amazon.com is going for, as of today, $64.99. Because this title has now been out of print. And that sucks. Because I don't know if this movie will ever get a re-release on Blu-ray. I really hope so. So this time, they can finally get all the extras that they left out. And also recycle all the other extras from this Blu-ray. So that way, we get to have everything that's on there. But either way, I'm glad I got this Blu-ray for a great price. So, <laughs> just beware. If you want to get this movie, try to find a better place to find this. For a lot less, because it's not going to be easy. But anyway, let's get to the review. It stars Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Linda Florentino, Selma Hayek, Jason Lee, Jason Mewes, Alan Rickman, Chris Rock, Kevin Smith, George Carlin, Bud Court, Alanis Morissette, yes, she actually has an appearance in the movie as God, yeah, the, the singer and also an actress because she was in the, the TV show You Can't Do That on Television back in the late 80s. Janine Galafio and Brian Johnson and it's written and directed by Kevin Smith the movie begins set in Wisconsin at a local airport we meet two falling angels Bartaby and Loki who are both played by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon who just assigned for a new mission after being banished for eternity from heaven and decided to find a new loophole to be able to go back to their home for where they came from and being redesigned as the angel of death but meanwhile we meet a trendy priest named Cardinal Glick who's played by George Carlin who decided to redecorate his cathedral by using a new sculpture 
of Jesus Christ for the upcoming redication festivities of an image known as Buddy Christ. And once the angels had seek their salvation, anyone who enters it will be able to receive a plenary indulgence. So they received the encouragement from a demon named Ezreal, who's played by Jason Lee, along with his Nigerian triplets, who happens to be free teenage hockey player hoodlums, who just beat up a homeless man named John Doe Jersey, who's played by Buck Quartz, at a local ski bar arcade. So that's where we meet a divorce abortion clinic employee named Bethany Sloan, who's played by Linda Ferlatino, who attends a service at the church in Illinois by sending some donations for John Doe Jersey, since he's already been hospitalized. The next day, we meet an angel known as the Voice of God, Metatron, who's played by Alan Rickman, who declares that she might be the last relative of Jesus Christ. He explains to her that both Bartaby and Loki aren't allowed to succeed by re-entering heaven, but they decided to take the risk by overruling the world of God by fundamentals concept of using God's omnipotence by wiping all the existence. So together, she teams up with two prophets who are drug-dealing stoners named Jay and Silent Bob, who's played by Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith, who just rescued her from the triplets, along with the 13th Apostle Rufus, who's played by Chris Rock, and the Muse named Serendipity, who's played by Summer Hayek, who just uh, work at a strip club. That is, until Elzriel had summoned a human feces uh, demon known as the Gogothodon. So, which all the gangsters um, in the club had tried to attack him, but yeah, they all failed. And <laughs> so Silent Bob actually had stopped him by using a deodorant spray. Yeah. Now, after that, Bartaby and Loki had went on a mission to travel to New Jersey just to get to the cathedral but they decided to bring some referees around to go on a killing spree just when they went on onto the bus and just shot one man yeah, fleeing all the passengers out of the bus to escape and then they wound up in the, the Moody Industries building where just when they interrupt their business meeting from the corporate executives, including the head of the company, um, Loki decided to um, Loki decided to do a speech by going on top of the table, spreading all these dark rumors and secrets uh, towards them, and killing them by using a tall, by using a huge silver gun except for one employee who's a woman who ha who claims to be innocent. So, yeah, she's the only one that's alive, and, and she was very lucky. So on the train to New Jersey, you know, Bethany, uh, Bethany and his crew, who's already lying around drunk, were just, around, were just about to uh, enter the cathedral until they bump into Bartaby and Loki just when they're just going around making a conversation about how they're going to go after them. Once they find out the truth, that's when uh, they both attack them with Silent Bob uh, dumping them out of the train. <laughs> yeah, and this is when you know he does uh, sometimes speak. So when they finally arrive to the cathedral, they try to warn um, Cardinal Glick that uh, there's going to be a huge massacre that's going to arrive once Bartaby and Loki enters you know, during the festivities. And they try to, and try to tell them to cancel it, but he refuses. 
So then they tried to find another plan to do so until they were kidnapped by Ezreal and the triplets. And that's what leads to them actually showing a clip of what's going to happen next once they arrive, which they did. So it's up to them to stop them before it's too late. And I thought it was a very funny comedy, I mean, coming from Kevin Smith, because he sure does come up with a lot of fresh material, no matter what movie he was going to be set in. But I, I know he wanted to come up with somewhat of a fantasy, sort of in the a Monty Python, a Stick, uh, type of comedy. So, he just got one. I know, I mean, the movie did have some of its problems, because they had to talk about how you know how all the uh, all the people out there might be you know who they think they are like like the angels might be a lot evil than, um, than all the other angels here and then they sort of switch burst between the different kinds of of the apostles and the the muse and and the devils and all that and the god it's like wow but um, it did have a wonderful score by Howard Shore, who's usually very good at composing several great themes out there in every movie. It works so well because I, I love some of those beats that they use and and one of uh, those scenes in the film, even at the end credits, that has a, a dramatic score like that, that just feels just right. Yeah, it was perfect. Uh, for an all-star cast, uh, I thought uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck uh, was, even though I'm not a big fan of Affleck still, as I know I've said it before, they did a great job. You know, given the material that they needed, you know, playing the, the, the two fallen angels, you know, trying to find a better way to, to get back to their home. And meanwhile, they just go around on a killing spree, you know, killing several people. Especially the ones in that massacre at the cathedral, yeah, where all their their heads are being, you know, cut off, um, exploded, you know, stabbed, killed. Even had Bartaby hold one man, and and he just dumped them all the way down from the sky and and splat into the pavement. I mean, that was just so fucked up having to see that scene. But hey, there was also an exploding scene in the movie, you know, where we get to see a cameo appearance by Alanis Morissette as God. <laughs> uh, she doesn't speak in the film, but given that performance, I think she did work. Because she started, um, you know, singing a note and actually uh, <laughs> scream as loud as she can with that particular... She actually had the power to actually scream at the top of her lungs right in front of him and he explodes. <laughs> and he really did deserve that after what he did. Because he already did kill um, Loki. Lina Fortino did a great job too. And you know, I know Chris Rock was uh, <laughs> always coming up with all these funny dialogue and just trying to let her know about who she really is, and you know, he could definitely be over the top at times. Also, Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith, you know, playing Jay and Silent Bob is just an icing on the cake. I mean, no matter what they do, you know, they're always been a funny duo to to help out, uh, <laughs> considering that they, you know, they're just all stone and and you know, even uh, Jay wanted to have sex uh, with her. And they always kept coming up with some more uh, dialogue where they talk about all the movies that they watch. You know, like the, the John Hughes films, like Sixteen Candles and all that. When they went inside a restaurant. And um, also Samba Hayek was um, very beautiful and sexy uh, as Serendipity. Also Jason Lee, you know, given that, uh, that horns look on, on his forehead... It's just, uh, <laughs> you know, almost looking like a devil there is, uh, is great. He's usually great when he's in films uh, that was directed by Kevin Smith. 
But I know he went on to do other movies afterwards. George Carlin. Very good as Cardinal Glick. You know, giving some uh, funny lines there. Even though uh, you basically know what happens to him at the end. Uh, yeah. I really miss the comedian too. Because he's always been known for for swearing. Coming up with all these foul languages in a sentence. And... You know, he's always there anytime he does all of his stand-up, even though, you know, he plays a lot of different roles in his career. Like, he played Rufus in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. You know, he played Mr. Conductor on Shining Time Station. And he just does all these other movies, you know, with Kevin Smith and other types of films that he does. And comes up with a lot of funny dialogue, you know, no matter what he plays. But uh, the real star of the film definitely belongs to Alan Rickman. You know, he was very tremendous playing the, the voice of God. There was like several scenes where you know, he's always... Uh, whenever he tells uh, Bethany how to... Uh, whenever uh, he always asks to say uh, which, uh, which place that they want to go, they, he just snaps and they go directly to another place. Like first it was the the Mexican restaurant, and then the other one was at some some local restaurant uh, with their friends around, so that was interesting. Yeah, I really miss him already. I mean, Rickman's just, just awesome. But yeah, out of its uh, 10 million budget, uh, out of uh, 30.6 million dollars, I mean, this was the third highest grossing film that came out on November 12th, 1999. But now the film is becoming more underrated. And, and it's just... I mean, there are some people that talk about it, but not as much. And I just hope someday this movie gets a, a better Blu-ray release, because it really deserves it. I love Dogma. It's a great film. I definitely recommend it. So anyway, I give the film four stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.